video you are about to watch is the class lecture for this English 8 assignment. Treat it as you would any lecture by paying attention, following directions, and taking notes. But this is better than a lecture. You can pause the video to catch up with notes, review something that you missed, or refer to other files on your computer. Remember that you are accountable for all material in this video. Today's lecture covers the introduction section of the speech analysis assignment. The section of the paper we'll discuss today will introduce the speech by discussing the time of its delivery and its purpose. As we work through today's lecture, I will be referring to Google Documents that you have access to as well. A document that is a model example of this speech analysis assignment, one that is clean and one with Google Comments. So if you have that readily available, you may wish to pull that up on your desktop to refer to from time to time. I'll use that model example to discuss how you should write your introduction section for this paper. Let's begin by taking a look at the model example. I'll read the introduction. Oh, and before I do that, do not forget that we are dealing with the speech at the Brandenburg Gate written and spoken by President Ronald Reagan on June 12, 1987. Let's go with the introduction. During World War II, the United States and the Soviet Union allied against Nazi Germany. Unfortunately, shortly after the end of that war, both nations declared their opposition to each other. This conflict led to a competition called the Cold War, where the U.S. and its allies lived in an overwhelming sense of mutual distrust and enmity. In fighting this conflict, the Soviet Union built a wall through the city of Berlin, Germany, dividing their territory from territory owned by Western allies. The Soviets wished to keep their citizens from moving to the West, and this wall prevented them from doing so. President Reagan and Soviet Premier Gorbachev had recently met in Iceland to discuss nuclear arms reduction when Reagan traveled to Berlin to meet with West German leaders in 1987. He delivered this speech in front of the Brandenburg Gate, a monument next to the Berlin Wall. In his speech, Reagan sought to unify Western nations against the Soviets and pressure Gorbachev to open his nation to the West. This model example has accomplished a few key tasks that you must accomplish when you are writing your own. Let's take a look at what those are in sequence. First, this section will define the period and establish its conflict. The period we're talking about is the period of the speech. So in this case, it is the Cold War. Let's take a look at how this paper defines that. In these first couple sentences, during World War II, the United States and the Soviet Union allied against Nazi Germany. Unfortunately, shortly after the end of that war, both nations declared their opposition to each other. This conflict led to a competition called the Cold War, where the U.S. and its allies lived in an overwhelming sense of mutual distrust and enmity. These first few sentences establish the conflict and establish the time. It names it by talking about the Cold War provides the two parties to the conflict, the Soviet Union and the United States, and hints to what the nature of that conflict was. Now, the conflict of the Cold War is rather complex, so this has not gone into detail about each specific complaint of one nation against the other, but it has established both sides. The United States and the Soviet Union established the time frame and talked about how this was a political conflict between two rival nations. Your section should also establish the time, give the two parties to the conflict, and give a basic sense of what that conflict was all about for them. That's the first task, and it can be accomplished in a few sentences. You'll notice that I have given some research in there, and I have made sure to clarify what the title of this period was and what the conflict was specifically. Let's take a look at the second step. Secondly, we should move from a general discussion of the time to more specific discussions of the time. As we move from general to specific, we'll be talking about generally what the period was, in this case the Cold War, and then moving specifically to the moment of the speech, which is Ronald Reagan in West Germany in 1987. Now the Cold War spans some 50 years approximately. And this moment of this speech is one event within that overall period. You want to move from the overall period to the specific point of the speech, 1987. Let's take a look at how the model example does that. 
we'll pick up reading. Uh, the, in fighting this conflict, we give a detail about the Soviet Union building the Berlin Wall. Now, that's a specific event within the Cold War, but it directly relates to the speech that Reagan will give as Reagan urges Gorbachev to tear down the Berlin Wall. He's standing and talking in front of the Berlin Wall, so we give this detail. This moves us to something that's a little bit more specific, giving specific background of the speech itself, not just the Cold War. I continue with other details, Reagan and Gorbachev meeting in Iceland to discuss nuclear arms reduction because that event happens very close to the time of this speech. And then I become even more specific, talking about Reagan traveling to West Germany in 1987. All of these details move the reader to a more specific point in history, the point where Reagan has delivered his speech. And overall, what I'm doing with this section is giving my reader a sense of what the overall time was and how that relates to the specific event of the speech that I will discuss through the paper. Let's continue. The third task to complete is introducing the speaker and the specific situation. So you can see that I was doing that toward the end of the section that I just discussed when I discussed Reagan and Gorbachev and discussed Reagan specifically traveling to West Germany in 1987. And then I talk about him delivering this speech at the Berlin Wall. So your speech has an author, of course, and that author arrived at a certain place at a certain time to do a certain thing. Reagan arrived in West Germany in 1987 to speak to West German leaders, and he gave this speech. In your introduction, you must give the occasion of the speech, who the speaker was and what the speaker was doing at that place and time to give the speech. One last task remains, and that is the conclusion that gives the purpose of the speech. Your speech analysis report will hinge upon the purpose of the speech. And by that, I mean that most importantly, you must discuss what the purpose of the speaker was on that given day. And we can see in the model example how I've ended with that purpose. Let's take a look. In his speech, Reagan sought to unify Western nations against the Soviets and pressure Gorbachev to open his nation to the West. I have moved from a general discussion of the Cold War to a specific moment in the Cold War when Reagan gives his speech in Berlin, and I have concluded with why Reagan was giving that speech, the purpose of it. Now, if I've done this correctly, this entire section, this introduction, has taken a reader that might not know anything about the Cold War or this speech up to the moment of the speech and the purpose of it. And hopefully, if this is written properly, they understand the time in history, the speaker's identity, and why the speaker is giving the speech at this moment. Let's review. In writing the introduction section, I must begin by defining the period and establishing the conflict. Both parties to the conflict must be stated, and I must give the name and history, or the period of history, a title and help the reader understand what the problem was at that moment. Next, I must make sure to move from general to specific. And when you are establishing specific details, make sure there are specific details relevant to the speech. Third, I must introduce the speaker and the specific situation. Make sure your reader understands who the speaker is, their basic identity, which will be detailed later in the biography, and what they were doing at that place and time. Finally, I conclude with the purpose of the speech. I leave the reader with a sense of why the speech was given and what the speaker was hoping to accomplish. If you've written your introduction section properly, your reader will understand exactly what the speech is about, and the biography and analysis sections will be clear within that context. As you have questions about any of this material, please bring those questions to class discussion. If anything is confusing or unclear to you, your questions can be answered then.